about your collage, the collage work that you're doing? The collage. The collage, I guess, ties in nicely with influences, because that's definitely the things that influence me or inspire me, um, like science and medicine, sociology and history and, and, and everything else you could possibly think about. It's definitely a way that information can easily come into my work without having to do a different piece, you know? Mm -hmm. Collage, after all, is, is literally about gluing things and sticking them together, but there are different things you're sticking together, and, and that, I think, in itself is a nice, you know, metaphor for society. Do you have any political influences that you have actually represented in your work? I, I not directly, you know, I, I do have my own political influences, but my work, although it is political and, and socio-political, um, I never try to drive home a singular point of view, or it's never, never, it's never really about my way of seeing things, although that's, that's a good component of it, but in, in any single piece, it's not from only one side, it's from maybe my side as a starting point, but also immediately taking into consideration all the other ways of looking at the same thing, you know, and that's that's what's interesting to me, you know, is like how these ideas share similarities and are diametrically opposed to one another, and, and that's interesting, you know. I mean, it's never quite interesting if it's just about one thing from one point of view, you know, that's, you know. So you have a diverse point of view in, in all of your collages. Absolutely, you know, it, in, in some ways it's almost like um, like a, a debate or a debate team structure. You have to prepare yourself to take on the pro or the con at any time. Therefore, when you look at any one thing, you have to look at it from the other point of view. You know, in essence, you have to know your enemy well, you also have to be prepared because you don't know which side you're gonna, gonna have to defend or, or talk about. And I like that way of pursuing um, thoughts and ideas is always to consider the other person's point of view, you know. But that how that translates into the artwork. It's representing those um, potential ideas in there so it allows anyone to really kind of assemble the parts in their in their own way, you know, but hopefully in an expanded way, you know. Good. Like an interesting conversation. You know? Awesome. Conversation is interesting when you know it could be really difficult, but also very interesting when two people who disagree about something strongly mm -hmm. um, have this conversation, and it's a heated debate, and they all have their one point of view, and they're trying to put that forward. But the interesting moment that happens in those conversations is that when either party slowly starts to see. They don't have to agree with, but they see the other point of view that the person's trying to make. And then they they don't even necessarily have to change what they believe, but they then start to consider, you know, and empathize with and they start to listen, you know, and that's that's a point that it became a, is, is a tipping point that I think is, is interesting. And the conversation to me is like unbelievable when you walk away then slightly adjusting your point of view because of what you learn from the other person's point mm -hmm. of view. And I think that's that's a remarkable point of some conversations, you know. But also How did you get involved with working specifically with paper? What what led you to work with the medium of paper? Um it started I mean it started back in in really in undergrad in, in art school. Um, I wasn't a good painter, um, at least I don't think I was, you know, I maybe mean, I think I'm a better painter now, but I don't use paint. Um, but my, my, my degree was in painting and drawing, so I mean I was always a really good draftsman. I could draw exceptionally well, I struggled with painting. Um, <clears throat> but then as you go through the process of a, a, a typical art education, you have to do painting, you have to do oil painting, you have to do it, you know, so you have to experiment with these things. You never know where you're going to land. And uh, I just started combining, you know, mediums very early on because I couldn't, uh, it didn't make sense to me why if I was working in a painting 
if I can really make that mark express the best way drawing it or using graphite, why wouldn't I do that? Why, why do I have to force it to be a painting? You know, I'm not saying that one's right, one's wrong, but what I'm getting to is that very early on I started doing mixed media work. And the mixed media evolved into less and less acrylic, you know, and I, I immediately went from oil, you know, in the, in the traditional art school, you know, dogma from oil to acrylic immediately, abandoned oil altogether and worked with acrylic because it was immediate and it was also could easily take on other mediums, you know, like graphite, like anything. And it worked very quickly and I worked very quickly. So that became, just evolved into really equally populated mixed media works. And then over time, as I was working on mixed media pieces, eventually some of the media that I was using, um, I didn't use. I started to use more than other. And, and paper pieces and collage always were in there as like one little moment in there, which became more and more, that eventually at some point I had this moment where I was using very little drawing and acrylic, you know, um, with all the collage that I had this moment and I said, I don't need those things. I can do everything with just paper, you know? And that's why I do believe that what I do is painting and drawing. It's just the, the painting is from picking up different pieces of paper, different colors, and you, you, you're putting it down in that same process of building up layers. It's just different colored pieces of paper, and I build it up the same way. And the drawing is, is cuts, you know, marks I made with my a black X-Acto blade or tearing sheets of paper. So the, the drawing and painting is still there to me, but now it just happens to be 100% paper, you know. And I do appreciate when people say, you're paintings, because I do think they are paintings, but truth be told, there's no paint in here, you know. It just does not exist. There's a lot of ink. There, there's, there's, there's a lot of ink on the paper, yeah, I and mean, that's, that's true. So and <laughs> that's why it is kind of, it's, it's in both worlds, you know, but. You've crossed over. Yeah, in some ways, yeah, it just kind of pushed maybe what you can consider what is painting or drawing into a, in another way where people people think, no, it's collage. It's like, well, okay, then what is collage? You know, and it, you it also can go use right text. Yeah, uh, text. yeah well, te text, especially in these pieces, I mean, as I said, different series are different, but these are about texts, you know. I mean, the name of the show is uh, Plimcess, so. It's, you know, crossing out words, making way for new words, you know. What's the name of the show again? Plimcest. Plimcest? Yeah. And where is it going to be opening? At uh, Gallery 825. And which, uh, what time frame? Uh, October 15th through November 12th, 2011. Awesome. So. Now you also talked to me about Blythe projects. Do you have something coming up for that? Yeah, well my, my fall this year is very, very busy to say the least, you know. But yes, I have, uh, I'm now represented by Blythe projects in Culver City. And uh, Blythe projects, I will have their main solo show in September, which opens September 10th through November 22nd. And the two shows, um, Life Projects being first, 825 uh, being second, actually overlap for a little over a week or so. Um, so they have that going on. So it's, it's busy in the fall, which is good, because LA is going to be spectacular this fall. It you know, is. For the arts, so everyone's excited about it. <laughs> how, how much does Los Angeles influence your work, like your environment? How much does your environment get into your collages? Yeah, that's a great question. I like that because not many people, I like the question because because you see something that, that could be true. And I think it is, you know. Uh, you know, I'm, I've grown to be a big fan of